Okay, we don't have time. Okay. So young entrepreneurs are pretty confident to get the program started. <laughs> they seems to be more confident than the older yeah. ones. Exactly. Idam kandru bayam mariyadun sulvanga. Tamil. Not only bayam mariyadu, they are more prepared. Uh-huh. And they, they, they are more, they are, they are more uh, attuned to technologies and handling such things. Exactly. We are we are more used to a formal setup and way different kind of audience so Correct. it's going to be and they are worried be. about what's going to happen or the results also they are very yeah. positive on their pretty well right. Yeah. Mr. Ashok Kumar and Mr. Ranganathan, both of them are good friends of both of us, me and Sharda. Okay, 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 okay. Absolute pleasure. So I'm glad okay. that I also now know one more friend. Thank you, Ramani Ramasana. <laughs> Absolute pleasure meeting you. Oh, very good. My regards to Sharda. Sure, sure. Okay. I will. Oh. I run um, Natural Salon. It's That's yeah, my know, primary your, business. You and your business, everything is very popular. So, you don't need an introduction <laughs> at all. <laughs> Thank you. And I visited your home at Kadalur also. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. That's when my mom was alive or? Uh, re- no, no, no. Very recently. Maybe about a year back. Oh, okay, okay. Sir, uh, he is known. He has to be introduced because... If he goes and tells Kumaravel, nobody will know. If he tells not Kumaravel, everybody will know. So, he is Indian. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, who is that? Hi, this is Hasini. Mm. Okay, so we'll start right now. Hi, everybody. Uh, today marks a major milestone day because of my life. Because I am reaching out to thousands of people, uh, young people like me who are watching this live. And it is an absolute pleasure. And uh, let me take time to introduce about myself. I'm Hasini. I'm 12 years old and I study in Chirina Vidya Ashram Chennai. I am the founder of The First Step, which is a YouTube channel where I interview young achievers and subscribe if you haven't. It really motivates me to do more. And uh, I am also a young reporter of the Brain Feed magazine. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome all of you once again. And um, uh, today we even have two celebrity speakers joining us. Let me introduce them. Uh, I, w- I would like to introduce Mr. Kumravel, sir, CEO of Naturals, uh, the person who has created more than 1,000 plus women entrepreneurs. And uh, I would just like to say when a woman becomes an entrepreneur, uh, she supports her whole family and their destinies uh, are changed. 
and uh, sir thank you so much for joining us today and it is a uh, great pleasure you're welcome thank you so much let me also it's take a pleasure thank you sir. thank you hasni it's my pleasure to join you all and also meet a lot of uh, interesting um, 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 high energy entrepreneurs uh, young entrepreneurs it gives me a new new high thank you so much for that it is a blessing sir thank you and let me also welcome uh, lenin jacob sir uh, featured in the 20s a uh, business thank owner you. and this is sorry 7th hello okay um uh, business owner and energy consul from melbourne australia uh so this is my being this is my this is my first event and it is already being an international event as you know i'm having viewers from all over the world as well as speakers who's joining it and i feel i'm very blessed as as well as the speakers who i mean other viewers i'm sorry and i as i understand this all comes with a responsibility and i make sure to give my best uh to make this event even more relevant we have young entrepreneurs joining us before that i would like to share the first mantra all of us have the same neurology if it is possible for others it is possible for me so if it is possible for these young entrepreneurs it is also possible for the young other young children too and uh, if you again if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe take a moment to subscribe and now let's continue let me take uh, let me introduce the entrepreneurs who are joining us today uh, vinusha 10 years old uh, founder of uh, four season pastries private limited nihal 11 years old founder of recycle my battery from usa keshika uh, 12 years old founder of case kitchen uh chennai rjt kaushal raj founder of uh, mylat app and um, this live event is also supported by the hindu tamil isai and uh, the brain feed hive magazine for this event and uh, happy to share the time and uh, reporter young reporter of the brain feed magazine once again and we also uh, have mr raj kumar sir a uh, gender manager of um, the hindu tamil isai thank you for joining us sir and i take time to welcome the schools who supporting us for this event uh, maharishi group of schools kalgi ranganathan monfort school edi5 international smart modern school and uh, arya vidyalaya and sai vidyalaya and uh, also the important people you guys i uh, i understand a few thousand people are watching this live on facebook and youtube now and uh, yes thank you so much and a big welcome to all of you who are watching this i would like to start this with a quote in my mother tongue tamil kai tholil ondrai kattukol kavalai unakillai ottukol india being a populous country uh the future jobs is a bleak and with this pandemic you know throwing more challenges i feel like entrepreneurship is the way forward for students in schools today as they find opportunities to find solutions so the topic for today's discussion is going to be young entrepreneurs passion or necessity and i would like wish kumarevel sir uh, to begin this discussion with his opening remarks towards this topic Uh, sir, your mic is on mute. I would request you to. Yeah, thank you, Hasani, and um, for that wonderful opening remark. Um, you look beautiful, and uh, you put it together very nicely. All the best for your YouTube channel. Keep shining, yes, sir. and uh, people like you are very special. Thank you. And uh, keep uh, keep your work. Keep on keeping on. My and my hearty welcome and uh, absolute pleasure meeting uh, Mr. Lenin. and the other co um, entrepreneurs i know vinusha and it's a great opportunity to meet quite a few new of the few, few young entrepreneurs uh, my um, hearty wishes and welcome to all of them to my friend rajkumar of the hindu group 
my friend lakshmi narayanan and all the children who are watching there my hearty welcome and good evening to all of you um the topic is passion i am very 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 excited about that word passion so wish everyone can have have wish in life when you start your life you everybody will have a wish everybody says i want to be rich i want to own a big house i want to own a, a awesome car i want to have lot of jewelry i want to travel around the world i want to have a big big business everything everybody wants to say have a have a lot of wish the question is are you able to take convert that wish into a burning desire and into a passion and into an obsession why are only few people able to do that and why are most not able to do that and that's where is the rubber meets the road why people like vinusha are very special and what is very different about them which another person cannot do if you ask me there is nothing different okay i think the first all of us have to believe that the person watching from there and the people sitting on the other side we don't have any special talent that is the something which i want to put it up front and straight the, but the trick of the trade is having a talent is one thing using the talent and putting it is is completely another thing that is where passion comes into the picture any work it is not what work you are doing you have to be very passionate about that work passion makes that difference involvement makes you important if an individual is to be called a street sweeper he or she should sweep the street so well as if michael angelo has painted or beethoven has composed music or shakespeare has written poetry everybody walking the road should stop and say here lives a street uh, here lives a great street sweeper that is where when you join the young people they the passion that is where the startup company people talk about it when you when you join a startup you see high energy in a startup and that is what is making the startup very special the entrepreneur in the head of it the managing director will do the housekeeping job he will be the office boy he will be the finance manager every job everybody will be doing looking at him only other people will join join that company and that is where startup companies are created a yes, steve jobs when he is created it is it is it is started it started in a garage so is a hcl so is a rich dad poor dad if you watch if you read his thing he and his friend will will start his company only from a garage and it is it is that kind of passion which which keeps the business started and that is what is very very important when i talk about passion i need to speak about my friend auto anodrai in chennai there are 50000 auto drivers but auto anodrai is my friend because he is very passionate about what he is doing when he enter into his auto he will say aditi deva bhava means guest is god and as he enter into your um, his auto you will suddenly find a super clean um, um, super clean auto and then there will be a tamil magazine there will be an english magazine tamil daily english daily hot water cold water coffee tea juice then there will be wifi station there will be a, a mobile phone charger so there will be a television and then half an hour journey in his auto you will find you are transported to completely another place and then suddenly uh, when when uh, um, you want to get down if it is raining he will give you an umbrella you can return to him the next time and seeing his auto everything body call the ndtv came out with an article they featured him in his, in, in their program about a 10 minute capsule and auto another became popular then he became a ted speaker he became a um, um, what do you call the the um, um, trainer for reliance he is a trainer for naturals he suddenly became far far important because he is passionate about what work he is doing it is not what work we you are doing which is important are you able to put passion to that and the passion is the differentiator passion come, 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 comes out of necessity i really don't know i think passion these young entrepreneurs i think passion has come out because they are very passionate and they love the work if you love the work the time it consumes time it doesn't matter how much work normal working people they go people if you want to be survive in life you can do in a 40 work work 40 um, hour week if you want to be um, um um reasonably successful you can do it in 60 hour work week if, if you want to be a super success then you do in a 84 hour the person who are passionate they there is no time for them actually they they are so involved in their work and they do their work again and again and again and they don't consider it work at all they love the work so much that they they like there is no absolutely no problem when i talk about the the they, they have so much love and self belief for that work um, um one of the 
story which i wanted to tell as i finished my um, uh, opening remarks is which a story which is very close to my heart which is about um, um uh, david statue by michael angelo which is a very marvel of the world with it is in uh, italy and you know, all over the world tourists look at that statue they marvel at that statue the story goes on like this of how this um, um, david statue was built this was a 18 feet long marble which was lying in italy and the museum officials told to various uh, sculptors and they asked can you do something out of it including they showed it to the including the famed uh, leonardo da vinci leonardo da vinci looked at that uh, marble and told this is flawed and useless and nothing can be done about it and then um, came th- about 300 hours uh, years later michael angelo and they showed again this marble to him and they asked him can you do something and michael angelo said yes i will and he took the work and he started working on it and he put his hammer and the chisel to it and he started hitting that and then one boy came and uh, asked uh, my, uh, michael angelo hey what are you doing you are hitting it with um, um, stone and uh, this thing you are hitting this stone, uh, stone with the hammer and chisel what are you doing he will he asked and michael angelo looked at him and told there is an angel inside i am trying to put that angel outside and trying to uh, make life easy for that angel that's what is the, the what everybody told it as flawed and useless uh, marble a michael angelo is able to took a, is able to see an angel inside even if the whole world doesn't believe in you if you start believing in yourself nobody can stop you on the contrary even if the whole world believes in you if you don't believe in yourself nobody can help you the final difference between everybody is only self belief these young entrepreneurs it, for me it took me a very long time especially in an indian environment in an in, indian indian setup if, if the self belief will come a very very late or it will not come at all indians a, a dependent rich baby will become a dependent child a dependent child will become a dependent adult a dependent adult will become a dependent parent a dependent parent will become a dependent grandparent india may have got independence in 1947 indians never get independence whereas an american child a western child born as dependent child becomes an independent adult then it becomes an interdependent parent and that is what is a big difference in india that dip- that independence uh, is is very very rare and that is where these kids at a very young age has taken their life and they have started their own picture um, quality of the painting is the responsibility of the painter no blaming allowed quality of the sculptor is the responsibility of the quality of the sculpture is the responsibility of the sculptor no blaming allowed the quality of your life is your responsibility these kids have taken life at a very young age everybody brush will be available and one parent will have a brush the uncle will have a brush the teacher will have a brush they will tell don't do this do this all those things will happen but these people have taken their brush and started painting their own picture and there is one favorite story of mine which i want to share it to end it this happened in america and this boy was a young 6 year 6th standard boy and he used to be an itinerant which means he is in a transferable place every one year his father is in a transferable job and he will keep on going from one one place to another and when he was not interested in school and studies etc but one day his teacher um, gave a um, what do you call assignment he told that um, what is that you want to do when you grow up in life and suddenly instead of the subject this teacher is talking about life and this kid who got very excited he went and bought lot of chart paper and put his heart into it his his, his dream is to create a um, 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 is build a 250 acre ranch and he want to raise a um, raise a thoroughbred racing horses he want to have a, have a track a track um, a track and he want to have a, a bunk house he want to have a central administration office he want to have a 250 acre ranch and he put his heart into it and he poured this and everything he painted and he wrote about it and he and he presented the paper to the teacher end of that um, and the teacher gave him f grade which means very poor grade the child went to the teacher and asked him hey why why what is the deal why did you give me an f grade and the teacher told you don't know what is the st- uh, land cost here you don't know what is the st- stud fees you don't know what is the price for retaining this kind of central administration office and this kind of track as a young kid if you have an unrealistic dream you will probably grow up and get very disappointed in life my role of a teacher is to ensure that you don't grow up and disappointed have a realistic dream and that is what will help you go 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 home and write another paper he went home and he told his father this is what the teacher has to has said what should i do um, um, he asked and the um, 
um, uh, father told, hey son, it is your life. Whatever decision you take will affect rest of your life. So think hard about it. He thought about it, he thought about it, and he thought about it. He was not able to sleep. Next day morning, he went and met the teacher. He told the teacher, you, you keep the F, I will keep my dream. And he went on to live the dream. And that is the kind of passion if you have. Anything is possible in this world. The world is not, not lacking in opportunity. The world is full of opportunity. It is lacking people who are passionate, who is, that is where the rubber meets the road. And I am glad that these young people at this very young age are able to show such a passion. It is well began. Continue that journey. Make sure that journey is interesting, not only for you and also for others. There will be some challenges which is coming along the way. No problem. Face it boldly and overcome that. And in overcome it, coming it, you will get better and the world will start watching you more. And that is where you can really come up in life. Um, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and you have taken the single step much, much, much earlier and you are ahead of others in the race. But it is not a hare in the tortoise race. Some hare runs very fast, takes a rest and the tortoise walks slowly and crosses the finish line. The moral of the story is slow and steady wins the race. In life, there is no slow and steady. It is fast and steady. You have started fast and ensure that race is continuing and you shine like a star and so that everybody looking at you will get inspired and everybody running the race and then the race will become beautiful. Wishing you all the best. Together, let us build a beautiful world. Thank you so much. Uh, definitely true, sir, because uh, it was like so inspiring all the stories which you told. Um, I could see the passion uh, in there and uh, thank you for uh, sharing it. As he said, uh, anything is possible is the question of right strategy and make sure you do your best. So I would like to move on with Lenin, sir. Now, what are your uh, opening remarks towards this topic, sir? Absolutely. First of all, um, it's an amazing work you're doing, Hasmi. It, it's an incredible and it's um, exceptional job. Thank you. It takes a lot of courage to come out and do a thing like that at such a, at such a young age. So first of all, obviously, uh, congratulations on that. Thank and you. are we on live? Is my video on there? Yeah. Okay. So I can. All right. So before I get into my uh, speech, obviously, good evening, everyone. Before I get into my talk, I would like to take this moment to thank my Almighty God for making me able and worthy to be here, and talk to all talk to all of you today. Everything I have and everything I will have is all because of God, and I look forward to testifying more of His mercies. Secondly, I would like to thank the first step for inviting me and giving me the honor of speaking to you all today. Indeed, this is a great moment of joy for me to be here in the midst of all these young and successful entrepreneurs who are not only an inspiration to us, but also a source of knowledge that we can all look up to. For those who don't know me, uh, just a brief background, background on me. I'm Lennon Jacob. I did my civil engineering from India and I moved to Australia in 2017 to do my master's in environmental management from the University of Queensland in Brisbane. Last year in September, I moved to Melbourne and today I work as an energy consultant and own a business here. Now, what I will talk to you today will be my journey of being an entrepreneur, how I chose a completely different field from my qualification and learned from my failures. I, use, I like to call my journey a journey of being a successful failure. And for the most part, this will be the first time many of you would know my side of the story. You know, like how they say, everyone, every story will glorify the hunter until the lion learns how to write. So I think it was about time that the lion learned how to write a story. Now, my journey starts back in December, 2018, when I had just graduated from my university in 2018 and was actively looking for a nine to five job. Well, that's, that's what a typical Indian mentality is. Finish your studies and get a nine to five job. But being an international student in a foreign land is not easy. We live, all of us live away from our families. We have to cook our own food, pay our own bills, and also work part-time to generate a source of income. In January, 2019, my contract with the United Nations ended and I was out of job. Very soon my landlord kicked me out of the house I was renting and suddenly I was homeless and jobless at the same time. I had about $112 in my account and I knew it won't last very long because I had a few bills to pay in the coming days. And because my student visa was about to expire, no one was willing to let me rent a room in the house. 
that is when one of my friend Anil Simon, who is also watching this video right now, asked me if I wanted to stay in his room until I found a place for myself. I immediately agreed to his offer. But since he had a really small room and there were two of us, I used to put a mattress and sleep on the floor. And because I had no money, I could not afford to buy groceries. So Anil would actually share his groceries with me, cook for me and look after me like an elder brother. Gradually, after almost three months of being jobless and homeless, sleeping on the floor and eating only bread and butter for like three months, I finally got a new visa and a full-time nine to five job. So eventually I moved out of Anil's house into a new apartment that I now rented. Only this time I knew I had to have more than one source of income because having only a salary as a source of income is one step away from poverty. So now entrepreneurship became a necessity to me. I did a lot of research into what I can start off my own. I always thought that business owners and entrepreneurs are actually the same, but it's not. Now let's imagine this. For example, in India, a business person would buy one kilogram of apple for 120 rupees and sell it for 140 rupees, making a net profit of 20 rupees per kg. The same one kilogram apple an entrepreneur will buy for 120 rupees, make five glasses of apple juice and sell each glass for 50 rupees, making a total income of 250 rupees, which is a net profit of 130 rupees per kg as compared to a businessman's net profit of just 20 rupees. That's the difference. An entrepreneur is a person who comes with a unique idea and starts their own startup company, whereas a business person starts their company using an old business concept or a very conventional idea. But now the question I had was, what do I start? I want to be an entrepreneur, but I don't know what to start. Now, one thing about me that most people know is that I'm a huge fan of shoes. I'm actually a sneakerhead. For those who don't know, a sneakerhead is someone who collects trades and or admires shoes as a hobby or passion. So I thought to myself, how about I sell shoes online? I knew there are websites where one can sell premium shoes and make huge profit. So I pitched this idea to one of my friends. I distinctly remember she looked at me and said, this is a waste of time. No one's gonna spend so much money in buying shoes. Why do you even bother? Trust me, for someone who's been broke, slept on the floor and ate bread and butter every day, these were not the word of motivation I, would, was, I was looking for. So I did my research into this, you know. And did you know, according to an article by the CNBC, and I quote, sneaker sales increased 37% last year, while high heels fell 11% during the same period, according to the data from the NPD group. I understood and realized that people were investing more money into buying sneakers than ever. For me, the premium shoes were my apples. So I would first do my research and understand. Now, this is how my business worked. I first did my research and understood what shoes were in high demand. Then I used my nine to five job salary to buy 10 to 15 pairs of those premium shoes from the Nike factory outlet. Now, obviously since these shoes were premium, Nike did not make a lot of them. So they would soon run out of stock in the market. Now, where do people go to buy things when they don't get them in the market? They go online. So one of these, once these shoes go out of stock, I would advertise these premium shoes on my StockX profile for people to buy. Since these were all premium shoes and not available in the market, sneakerheads would pay a little bit extra to have them in their collection. I started off by selling a $95 shoe at the minimum price of $210, making a net profit of $115 per shoe. Not to forget, I have 15 of these shoes. So overall in the beginning, I made a net profit of $1,725 in a day. Soon my necessity became a passion. You know, like they say, love what you do until you do what you love. However, my story did not end there. Because I was so afraid of falling back into poverty, I started generating multiple sources of income. From the profits I made from my shoe business, I started buying stocks and invested in small businesses like local cafes and gyms around the Melbourne CBD. From one source of income, I generated the second. From the second, I generated the third. From the third, I generated the fourth and it kept going. I clubbed my necessity with my passion to generate a business in the market that not only helped me grow financially, but also helped other sneakerheads to start their own business because I started investing in their businesses. 
you know, like they say, you become a team. And what is the full form of team? Together, everyone achieves more. You see, entrepreneur skills, when we brainstorm what people need today, is all about creativity and critical thinking, even problem solving and communication skills. But obviously, they are not enough. What I also realized along the way was that we do not just need skills to be an entrepreneur. We also need the entrepreneurial mindset. You won't believe this, but an entrepreneurial mindset is critical of success in a rapidly changing world. Today, the difference between the rich and the broke is that the rich would rather be educated than be entertained. And the broke would rather be entertained than be educated. The world of an entrepreneur is multidimensional in the sense of until what level you would want to grow. For some people making 15 lakhs per annum would be a great package at their job. And for some people making 15 lakhs per month would be a bad month. So this is my message to all the young entrepreneurs here and watching from their homes. Of the age that you are, you will have the most enthusiasm. You will have the most number of brain cells and the most number of hair. But in about a few years, your enthusiasm will go down. Your brain cells will decrease. And of course your hairs too. So the opportunity that life and God has given you today and the threshold that your life is on today, do what your heart wants. Dream big, let your passion blend with your necessity to become and do something successfully different because soon you will be old, time will fly and you will regret the chances you didn't take. So take a step back, take a deep breath and remember this is your dream. You are responsible for what happens in the end. This is your story. Look around, be creative. Even the little, all the tiniest thing you see around you is an opportunity for you to grow. Believe in yourself, know that you can and you will. With a prayerful mind, take the first step, make a few mistakes, learn from your failures, and most importantly, be humble and grounded. You know, even though I can afford a king size bed to sleep today, I do not sleep on a bed. I still love and choose to put a mattress and sleep on the floor because it keeps me grounded and constantly reminds me of the place I came from. And most importantly, surround yourself with highly motivated people who are as creative, inspired, and goal-oriented as you. A very famous personality once said, to see where you will be in the next five years, look at five of your closest friend. That's where you will be. And thank you again, and God bless you all. Thank you, sir. Uh, you did add a lot of value to it because I could see the experience Experience. Your story was really good. Happy failures, I would say. And uh, thank you so much for sharing. So we have Absolutely. two amazing uh, speakers who are going to add a lot of value with their experience today. And uh, I would like to ask my first question to Vinisha, our uh, youngest panel speaker today we have. And, Hi, uh, Hello. And... Um, could you please share just the story of uh, Four Season Pastries, how it happened? And... Yeah. So hi there everybody, I'm Venusha, I'm 10 year old. Today I have come here to share my journey and how I made it through. So my journey started when I was eight years old. I always saw baking and food videos, but I never do it. I just told my mom to do it and I just eat it. But when I was nine years old, a change came over me. I baked the cake with my friend for my mother's birthday. And that time one day I came to know how much I loved baking. I wanted to bake cake again, so I called my friend, come let's bake cake again. My friend said that baking is boring, it's not interesting, and I don't like it. So I baked the cake with my mom. I was always talking things about baking, and I was so crazy about it. I was so mad into it, and I was always talking things about baking. I attended many classes to develop my skill in baking, and also I went to internship in a five-star hotel and a cafe where I had a hands-on experience with the chefs. That was an amazing experience. Um, I learned more about baking there. My father and mother took me to many entrepreneurial sessions. And uh, I love reading books. I read books about entrepreneurs. I was inspired by ideas. I thought, why shouldn't I create my own brand? Then I started Four Seasons Pastry. I love seasons a lot. So uh, I incorporated seasons with cupcakes. So uh, my cupcakes are based on seasons. 
So uh, that is, uh, those are my signature cupcakes, and Force of Them Pastry has completed its one year right now on September 15, and uh, I have also got funding. So uh, it has successfully completed its first year. So as I said before, other than the cupcakes, they are my signature. Other than that, I have many verticals. Verticals. So uh, first vertical is my cupcake cakes and so on. Sandwich blondie is many more. Um, so I have a lot of various products such as uh, chocolate sandwiches, baking kit, and uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for sharing it, Vinusha, and uh, happy one year anniversary and thank congratulations you. for the funding. And um, I could see the passion uh, for season pastries is born out of passion. I could see that. And thank I you. would like to shoot my uh, next question to Keshika. Um, so please, could you share us uh, the story of uh, you being Hi. the founder of uh, KS Kitchen? Hi, this is Keshika Manohar. I'm 12 years old. I'm the founder of Case Kitchen and I also have a YouTube channel called Vayadi Samir. Um, uh, so basically in Case Kitchen, we sell brownies, mayonnaise and jam um, and more. So if you haven't subscribed my channel, Vayadi Samir, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you, Keshika, for sharing it. And uh, I feel this is also born out of passion and you're very passionate about cre uh, cooking and you're very creative. Uh, so I believe the next two entrepreneurs are born out of necessity. So I would like to um, ask Nihal from USA to tell us his story of uh, Recycle My Battery. Okay, sure. Hello everybody, my name is Srinihal Tamina. I'm in sixth grade studying at Woodrow Middle School in Edison, New Jersey. So first of all, I would like to thank Hassani for inviting me over. So um, the journey begins last year in 2019. So my dad has his own company called Still. I was pretty inspired by him because he came in the news, so I was pretty inspired by him. I wanted to start my own company as well. So one day I went to him and I asked him, can I start my own company? He said no, because I was too young to become an entrepreneur. I kept on asking him and he finally said yes. And he said, what I want, what do you want to do? What do you want to start a company about? I said, I wanted to start a company about plastic recycling. Because in India, you know, people throw plastic away in the rivers, in the water, and it's very harmful. So I wanted to start a company about that. But my dad said, since we live in the United States, now let's focus on the United States before moving on to another part of the world. I chose battery recycling because more than 3 billion batteries are thrown away every year na nationwide in the USA. Also, um, a lot of fires are caused because of the batteries because they're transported to landfills when the people throw them away and then they, they explode because there's no terminal protection with them. They just explode, which is very, very harmful to the environment. Also, uh, batteries have toxins inside them, like mercury and zinc, zinc oxide. They're the types of toxins that are inside batteries. So if you throw them away, the toxins leak inside of the water. So when the animals drink the water, you know what will happen. The animals will die due to poisonous water. So that is also harmful to the environment. And also, so that's why I started recycling my battery, to bring awareness to people about why it's important to recycle these batteries properly. And I, I also want to provide battery bins to the people so people can recycle their used batteries properly by putting them into the battery bin instead of throwing them in the trash. So this will um, eliminate wild, wildfires, it will eliminate fires, it will eliminate, eliminate the pollution caused by batteries, and it will make Earth a better place to live. Thank you so much for sharing it. And uh, again, you have a great mind. Uh, you're doing uh, something for the society which is to be appreciated. And I request Kaushal um, to talk about the MyLet app, uh, I mean, which 10,000 people have downloaded so far. And I request you to brief about it and how was it, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I, how was it, uh, 
how did it all happen and yeah. yeah i would request caution uh, hello everyone uh, i would like to thank uh, first step for uh, inviting me to this panel discussion uh, so i'm kaushal raj i'm uh, 16 years old and i'm the ceo and founder of mylat mylat is an app uh, which allows people to do their personal uh, financial accounting and it is mainly aimed at uh, small businesses and for uh, families so my i started mylat um uh, of when I, after i saw my parents having a conversation so they were having a conversation about uh, our accounts and the expenditure of our house and how they are not able to maintain it properly so i was looking at them and i also was thinking of an idea to how we can uh, uh, formalize our accounts and uh, how we can streamline that process then i asked my grandparents and then they told me that they used to write down all how much have they spent how much have they earned all on notebooks and they used to maintain proper accounts of it so i was like oh, why are people following this habit nowadays and i realized that because of credit cards and debit cards nobody actually accounts how much they spending they just they just uh, spending as how much ever they want and finally they see that they don't even have a lot of money to uh, use in it so i thought that uh, if i make an app it would be useful for everyone as nowadays everyone has a mobile phone and to be very accessible and that uh, people will be able to inculcate that habit of accounting and maintaining their uh, expenditure so i my app also targets children and uh, make sure that they also get a lot of uh, financial literacy and they are able to learn about the habit of accounting at a young age uh, so my app also uh, helps people by giving them reminders on the loans and emi payments it can also help uh, businesses also set up any small goals they have to for like uh, saving for uh, any cost or anything like that so my app is actually free and it's uh, very easy to use and till now over uh, 10000 people have downloaded it and uh, over 800 startups are actually uh, using it uh, so that is the story behind my app oh uh, thank you so much and uh, again you were very creative and uh, you help a lot of people right now uh so i would request kumaravel sir uh, to give his opinion on this because uh, there are uh, i mean bo- all those four young entrepreneurs who share their story um they are born out of passion and necessity so what is your opinion on this sir thank you hasni and uh, wonderful listening to all four of you and also um um respects to lenin very nicely hearing his story um i think the the uh, two of the people which is the keshni and uh, uh, vinusha are uh, um, very passionate about what they are doing and uh, the next two um, uh, are very um, necessity based they found a problem and they solved a problem and um, um, i think both both are very interesting uh, 5 plus 4 equal to 9 so is 6 plus 3 it is not whether you are starting from passion or whether you are starting with necessity these are a vehicle for achieving a particular destination it is how you are building on from there and continuing the journey and making it bigger in the process and making it good for you and for everyone together so i would say that i don't want to say that um, whether it is passion or necessity i think both have got their own merits and their own their own plus points i think uh, as i told that one is 5 plus 4 equal to 9 another is 6 plus 3 equal to 9 both are saying the same thing only it is from here on how you are building it and taking it forward in a manner in which it is useful to you to your stakeholders and to all the people around one of the um, first question i want to ask is to vinusha i was very um, happy to know that you you have got uh, funded and you are looking at uh, the uh, the uh, business from a, a very um the financial uh, from the point of view and as lenin has rightly said uh, um, um five year from now you are an average of five people with whom you associate with on a daily basis that's what um, jim ron says so beautifully he says in five year um, uh, lenin says that who you are the five people you are now with will determine where you are going to reach the f- f- next five years who are that five people to me yeah vinusha um so my parents yeah that is two my parents my mentors uh they all have helped me a lot actually uh my pa- i would say i would always take my parents as my friend actually they're always help uh, um, 
were always uh, motivating me and helping me all this and my mentors uh, there are three of my mentors suresh and sami sir i would also like to thank him he has helped me a lot in this journey so from starting to the uh, going journey he has helped me a lot actually so uh, i would like to thank him he is the founder uh, managing director of do circle uh and my second mentor who is lakshmi reddy she is in beka so uh she has also helped me she has uh, taught me up more things about baking chocolates those things and all and she is one of my mentor i would also like to thank her she is also my friend of uh, she is also my friend and my third mentor is uh, gk sir geeta krishnan he is a well known uh, chef in the baking industry He has forty-two years of experience in baking, and he has also helped me a lot. So these are like in five friends of mine who have helped me a lot, including my parents. So thank you, David. Sure, I think I think you have got a wonderful ecosystem. Keep shining. Thank you, sir. Asni, over to you. Ah, uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing it. And um, so I would uh, request Nihal now. I'm sorry. Yeah, I would request Nihal uh, to talk about the importance of uh, recycling batteries. Okay, so battery recycling is very important. But if you just toss a battery in the trash, there are toxins inside of a battery that can harm the environment. Also, fires are caused because of the batteries because sometimes they explode in landfills. All because of this. 65% of fires are caused in California because of this so i want to change it i want to change it by bringing awareness to all of the people on why it's important to recycle use batteries properly did you know that 3 billion batteries are thrown away every year in the united states that well that's a lot of batteries so i want to change that by providing people with battery bins so people can drop off their used batteries in the battery bin so to make earth a better place to live uh thank you so much for sharing it um, and uh, nihal I, do you think uh, such an opportunity or uh, such a problem is there in india also will you help somebody okay. wanting to set up a similar uh, model in india will you help them to set up in india okay so since i was born here in the united states of america i don't know that much about india but my parents told me that when they were little they my parents told me that when they were little um par ma then tagi ke pa my parents told me that Hi. when they were little, yes i will set up minimal shanda for sign tar ma good thank you so much i think there is a problem um, of similar problem here yeah. friends who are looking at yeah, yeah, wanting to set up a recycle my battery similar situation problem is here in india also nihal will be able to help of how to go about and his he will share his experience so that we can learn from him and try to put up that here thank you so much nihal for that you are and can, um, I, can i just add a point nihal oh definitely sir yeah. <laughs> um i myself actually i'm an environmental graduate so i understand the importance of recycling battery um if in the future if we do uh, think or plan to set up anything in india i'd be more than happy to be one of your investors who would invest in your company Okay. So just Thank you so much. When you do now, now we have a problem. <laughs> before whoever is going to solve the problem, we have got an investor ready. So now we. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you so much. Thank you, Lenin, for that. <laughs> so now over to Keshika. Lenin, you can ask your question to Keshika. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is my question towards Keshika. Uh, without any professional degree um, on entrepreneurship, you have founded Case Kitchen. So, what are the initial challenges you faced, Keshika? So, the first challenge which I faced was uh, delivering my food. Um, usually, we used to deliver our food through Danzo, and um, uh, the Danzo uh, people will not be uh, able to deliver the food to uh, re uh, remote areas. So. so we won't be able to deliver food to remote area so that was my first challenge and the second challenge was i was not able uh, 
sometimes the uh, danzo charges will be more than my brownies which the customers will not be happy to pay okay and uh, i would request lenin sir um, to talk about his failures he has faced or his challenges that he has faced because you run you also run a business so i would request uh, you to i think i think part of the reason why failures has become a part of myself of my personality is because i've tried so many things since the beginning and have continuously failed and failed over and over again but somewhere when you keep failing it gives you a confidence that you keep learning from your failures as well sure, now sir. i know that back when i first started uh, when i was in my university i was writing a lot of research papers on climate change and i was just 21 and people who were in my research uh, team were all like 45 40 plus people in my university age has always been a factor where people will think that you would fail or that you know you're too young to do something brilliantly amazing or too young to do something exceptionally well and that is one of the challenges that i've always faced and i think failures is something that over with time you'll grow and learn more knowledge i think books help you a lot when you are looking towards learning or gaining knowledge it does help you give a lot of perspective because like like uh, kumar sir uh, said in the beginning from one end you can see it's a six but from the other perspective someone will see a nine so it's not always that we are correct or someone is wrong it's the, it's just that we don't always see the perspective of someone else being correct like True. going ahead with the with these young kids who are coming up with their own businesses there will come a time where people will turn against you will be, because not everyone will be happy to see you grow or not everyone will be happy to be to see us being successful you have to understand one thing that it when you fail when you fail in your life or when you have challenges in your life when you tell your problems to someone 80% people don't care and 20% people are happy that you have a problem so in the end you're just left with yourself to deal with your own issues so that's when your experiences will come on and that's where your past experiences of what you've learned and what you will grow because when people turn against you or when you face challenges when you think you're about to fail a lot of people will come and pressurize you by saying a lot of negative things so you have to understand one thing that it's mind over matter people who matter won't mind and people who mind won't matter and it's always better to sit in a rolls royce and cry alone than sitting in a bus and sharing your experience with 100 people and showing a misery to everyone so the more you fail the more you'll always learn and the more you'll always grow and be an inspiration to everyone uh definitely sir and uh, as you said there are no failures only feedback you learn from your failures and it is always being a base and you make sure you, uh, you do not do it the next time and yeah. um, uh this question is towards kaushal now uh nep 2020 has introduced coding in schools right now and uh, do you think it will force a uh, high aptitude and critical thinking skills within students uh yes i do think it will actually help the uh, students so coding is uh, something that is not like taught taught a lot in uh, indian schools like uh, till now even uh, i remember they used to just uh, teach some simple uh, things only in a computer class and nobody used to even uh, care in mind about it but uh, i don't think the indian students still understand the need for coding and for development in like uh, technology as uh, students from like other countries do understand so i do feel that the nep uh, 2020 policy which in, uh, includes the uh, coding people will be, uh, students will be able to get more uh, problem solving skills they will actually be able to uh, fix more of the uh, problems they have and they will they'll be able to express more of their ideas and that might actually lead to increased in uh, number of startups and even more students can uh, uh, start creating more startups uh, so it will uh, increase their uh, critical thinking skills and it will increase their ability to uh, do more things and uh, in this 21st century uh, technology and computers are very important so i do feel that uh, the nep 2020 policy introducing coding is uh, very important and it's very essential uh, and yeah definitely thank you for sharing it uh kuravel sir do you think uh, critical thinking should be taught in school <laughs> yeah definitely why not any anything in, in, is uh, early we are learning life skill today one of the biggest problem um, is we have not been taught about money in schools and that's that's a big problem because in real life 
um, call the 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 schools and the college the schools teaches language it doesn't teach you communication the school teaches chemistry it doesn't teach you teamwork the school teaches physics it doesn't teach you goal setting the school teaches geography it doesn't teach you how to travel the school teaches uh, history it doesn't teach you how to become a leader to become a real life thing these life skills are actually more required that is why people who are studying extremely well in school seldom make it in life it is only the average students and the backbenchers who are more successful in life than the first rank holders and the gold medalist because the gold medalist and the first rank holders work for the backbenchers and the average student that is the 9 out of 10 times barring this abdul kalam i have not come across anyone who is successful both academically and also in real life steve jobs bill gates my opera winfrey jk rowling sachin tendulkar ar rahman narendra modi kalinger karunanidhi jayalalitha jayaram i can keep on the list is endless these people have not even touched college but after that they have dedicated their life to a single minded focus and they have developed life, life their legendary the possibilities came into the picture so it is it is very important that you go to the school enjoy life learn apart from academics learn something more than real academics that's what is my advice to all the students yes study well but apart from that identify your plus one in school school is a school is a place for you to fail because if you try something new for the first time you are in your invariably you are going to fail i think that is very very important you should take failure in your in your as a learning process because the sachin tendulkar did not score a four in the first time he, he took the bat yeah rahman did not play a perfect music the first time every time we start something new whether it is riding a bicycle or or learning swimming or learning a business we will make lot of failure and that is how we really learn are we converting our failure into learning is what is really going to be um, thing you have to differentiate yourself from your failure i have not failed my efforts have failed these are two different things at the young age people will say you have failed do not take it take them you have not failed your efforts have failed that means you have to go and correct something what you have done which is not work i think you should have that kind of passion and um, entrepreneurship is your ability to go from one failure to another without losing enthusiasm it is your ability to go from one failure to another without losing enthusiasm and that's called entrepreneurship and that is what you also should learn on the way to success you will be meeting lot of failures you should be able to take it in the stride keep learning to use it as an advantage use it as a learning process don't make the same mistake correct the mistake you will make the next one make the correct correct the next one and keep on moving and moving moving anyone who wants to know about how to turn failure into success should read uh, abraham lincoln story i don't think anyone in life could have faced so much of failure but still he reached the top of the world and that's what is abraham lincoln's story all about i think that is something which you need to look at failure failure is like a salt without that the food won't be tasty too much will will spoil the food it is intended to so the ability to add a small amount of salt especially at an early age is very very useful for you at this point at the same time when you are very young you will get lot of attention you will get lot of press press people clamoring you you will get lot of people saying you are awesome etc etc don't get carried away i think that what lenin what he said even now is very true that is that is very admirable that is even now he is not even when he afford when he can afford you need to be grounded do not take your success or your failure very seriously do not take your success or your failure very seriously at this young age lot of attention is around you lot of thing will be around you you will suddenly think you are super success all those things and suddenly when lot of people running you will see the the um, uh, light going to everybody else you will feel you are you are not getting the same attention don't worry about that you keep focusing on your dream and you keep moving towards that dream big start small and keep moving eventually you will reach where you want to reach thank you so and much just to and just to add if i may if i may just to add to kumar's point when you fail it's actually a matter of um, how rather than why when you fail instead of asking yourself why you'd fail if you could just rephrase that question into how i could have done something differently or how i can do it differently what we often do is we start comparing ourselves with others other people's success that's one of the most 
critical thing or the one of the most foolish thing that we do as entrepreneurs when we fail we immediately look at the person and we always be like oh he's achieved this how did he do that one of the key things we have to remember here is that we need to compete with ourselves we need to make sure that we are better today than we were what than what we were yesterday you oh, sir and uh, both of you i could see the experience and uh, what and all you faced it uh, i mean your speech is really you know inspiring and it motivates a lot of people to do more and um, this question is from the audience to vinusha there are countries that celebrate failures in business and there are festivals celebrating failures what is your opinion on this so yes i do agree but when you see more than celebrating a failure you uh, learn from your failure that is more important uh, important uh, in entrepreneurship actually more than celebrating it just learn from your failure and also you can you should learn from failure a uh, failure is a part of an entrepreneurship journey so i think so yeah that's my Mm-hmm. i think um, i am very um, um um happy and impressed to know about the countries are celebrating failure one of the problem with the indian society and indian country is that we don't celebrate the the failure we are the r and d is big lacking in this country there is no research happening in this country there is only d which is happening yes, if a country sir. has to prosper it has to invest time and resource in the r and d r and d means research means there will be lot of failure you will not edison says so beautifully well, i have failed 999 times i have not failed i have known 999 times something which will not work that means i am closer to what will work when he was around 500 times there is a um, um, what a reporter who went to edison and asked hey you have become a biggest talk biggest failure of the um, um, town i believe you have failed 500 times how does it feel like to become a failure um, and um, edison um, and, uh, told that reporter hey young reporter i have not failed 500 times i have now i now know 500 times what will not work that means i am closer to what will work soon and i will find that and that's what eventually happened when um, edison invented the tungsten as the filament which will work for the electric bulb i think the country as a society we should encourage failure and we should celebrate failure it is because r&d is a very important is the backbone of countries which are doing extremely well we are a, as a country we are only in development we are not in research let us face that reality sometimes we should know what is our problem lot of us we all talk about our past we all glory about our our grand great grand sister our ancient this thing and we pride of that and we leave the present i think that kind of a, a past bragging should go off i think we should understand reality and we should know what is the problem the world is growing at a much much better way at a much faster way and we should understand from the developing nation what has worked from them and we should adapt to that and that kind of mindset is what is required for this country to prosper uh definitely sir and uh, of course is it it, it is an yes and uh, uh, this question is towards keshika now what is the advice you would like to give uh, for young entrepreneurs uh your mic is on mute hello keshika okay and uh, let her come back until then we'll move on to nihal right now does recycle my battery uh, try to spread uh, this awareness in developing uh, countries yes it does okay and um, it does i think it is very uh, essential to spread this awareness because uh, you have put in a great effort to do it and i appreciate you for that and uh seems keshika is not able to unmute there might be some technical glitches so let me move on uh okay this is this question is towards uh vinusha now does competition scare you 
so you have like, attended a lot of competitions uh, you won a lot of awards in a class so does competition scare you anusha doesn't scare me so when you see competition is a way where you learn many things you learn like uh, uh, how what will the judges expect and uh, how you can present the dishes so those kind of things so uh, even uh, when you don't win the competition you will learn those things i think so competition doesn't scare me so uh, uh, but while going itself don't think i will fail just keep uh, the strong belief in yourself yes i would also say believe in yourself and uh, you should have I think that is wonderful uh, of vinusha to say that competition um, you learn from whenever you go to a competition you go whenever you go and meet from people in new things i think the competition is very very important competition brings the best in the um, uh, product and the worst in the people the best thing which has happened to coca cola is pepsi cola minus pepsi cola the cola market would not have opened minus the other uh, what do you call the uh, bakers home bakers the home bakering as a market will not open up when more and more people involved in a particular um, 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 skill or a particular activity a market for that activity will open if only when there is very little competition the market will not open your job will become both as opening the market and also has to become the um, um, leader of that category i i feel competition is the best and when competition good competition is good for business and we should always encourage competition yes Definitely. just to add to that i think just to add to that i think competition also makes room for innovation and creativity because when you understand that product a is better than product b and that you have a product c which isn't as approachable in the market you eventually would start thinking out of the box so you would eventually go and do a critical thinking you'll do your own problem solving complex problem solving to see what you could do better to actually make it more approachable or presentable in the market so obviously competition is good as long as it's helping you in a positive way if it's demotivating you if it's putting you in depression then don't go for competitions but as long as you're expecting something positive of it if you are willing to learn and be more creative in your product then obviously competition is absolutely good yeah uh, competitions does help you to um you know um it motivates you and uh, you could say uh, you could whether you fail or win it really does not matter at least you learn something new yeah, yeah. and i would say that and this Kaushal, question... i have a question for you i am wanting to uh, working on a project which is um, on uh, home service which is um, the electrician plumber i run a natural salon i now want to do home service for uh, the the salon um, um, can you help me to pre, pre, what do you call uh, um, with an app for that home service which is a combination of three way one is for customer another for is for back end another is for this freelancers we need to connect the dots uh, yes sir uh, surely uh... i will take your coordinates and connect you offline thank you yes sir. and uh, this question is towards um, kaushal right now uh technologically how will india benefit as more students learn coding uh so yes uh yeah as more students are uh, able to learn coding and uh, nowadays there are many courses available uh, on the internet for free you can learn various types of coding uh, you can do artificial intelligence there are various uh, methods so as a country for india yes it will be highly beneficial as uh, in other countries already uh, students uh, already gone to the technology space and are already doing so many things but in india i still feel that only after you become an adult or you join a company only are able to learn all these uh, skills so uh, as uh, the uh, latest policy has also introduced coding in schools also so students will be able to come up with better ideas uh, will be able, able to implement it better uh, uh, through coding and uh, that i'm sure will benefit uh, uh, india's uh, whole country as uh, i know that uh, uh, students and children have so many ideas but uh, they're not able to express it or do anything about it so i feel that they learn coding they'll be able to uh, express it and actually do something with, uh, with the idea 
and uh, yes as we are running out of time i also have uh, a principal who is joining us today uh, bhuvaneshwar sir from kalgi monford uh, school i would request you to um, speak a few words about this topic sir hello hello okay we'll come back to that um, okay we also have uh, rama ma'am for uh, i request rama ma'am to talk a few words about this um, topic uh, good evening am i audible yes ma'am i've been listening to all of you and uh, it's wonderful to see you children becoming thinking human beings that's so very important that's one thing i want that children should think it's not just following instructions rote memorizing something learning it's it's not just that there's so much more and you people are on track uh, you're learning a lot you're doing a lot of work you are brave enough to go up front and say this is what i believe in this is what i do this is my product i'm ready to put it out there for the world to see i'm so very happy for all of you and asmi you did a beautiful job Thank getting you. everybody together and um, uh, mr lenin and uh, mr vale they were talking it absolutely made sense this is exactly what children need you need competition but you need to know how to take that competition as long as it is going to reinforce you positively brilliant only thing i would say is never put yourself down never compare yourself where you're going to put yourself down each one of you is special so special that as long as you believe in yourself believe that you're special believe you're here on earth for a reason there is nothing that can stop you ever so all the best keep going keep doing what you're doing and i think all of you will do brilliantly well congratulations and all the best as ma'am said everybody is unique and uh, thank you for sharing those it really motivates children and i would also request uh, rajkumar sir from hindu tamil sai uh, to speak a few words towards this topic please okay um i think he is not here so uh as we are running out of time uh um i would request uh, lenin sir and komarvel sir to give their uh, ending remarks on this topic to um sum it all up and in this so we'll begin with komarvel sir first thank you and um, thank you hasini and um, wonderful meeting all the young entrepreneurs actually instead of we giving you um, inputs you have actually given us a lot of uh, inputs so that we can uh, make our life uh, better so thank you so much for that um, to each and every entrepreneur your energy is very contagious and uh, it it actually motivates us to work more one point i want to um, uh, leave uh, uh, with is um, your ability to um, uh, uh, one formula which i have seen it work in life i want to share it as my parting thought is uh, focus plus daily improvement plus time equal to genius focus focus is your ability to say yes to the one thing and the discipline to say no to the 99 distractions if you chase two rabbits you will catch neither focus on what you want to achieve and be at it second in that daily improvement it is not it is not focusing and doing the same thing again and again and again it is are you imp- improving on your on your subject on a daily basis that is what you should do that and give time the time law of the farm governs if you have to plant this uh, um, uh, seed then it has to become a, a plant and then it has to become a tree then only the flower and then only the fruits will come don't be in a hurry entrepreneurship is a long haul journey it is a marathon it is not a sprint be at it keep focusing and improve on it daily your time will come and you will keep shining your dream is your signature make sure the entire world knows it wishing you all the best together let us build a beautiful world thank you so much
uh, I mean, thank you for spending your time here, sir, with us. And you did add a lot of value to it. Your words were really inspiring. And I now request uh, Lenin, sir, uh, to give his uh, ending uh, remarks on this topic and sum it up. Once again, uh, before saying anything, once again, thank you so much for inviting and finding me worthy enough to be here, to be okay. speaking to all of you. And obviously, uh, the marathon and the sprint line, I was supposed to add in my line, uh, last line, but obviously, Kamas has told that before I could say it. And obviously, as a young entrepreneur, I have always understood the fact that you will definitely face a lot of challenges as you grow, because at this point, your thought process is limited to a certain um, genre. Once you grow, once you start bringing more products in the market, you'll see a lot of challenges coming your way. It's really important to stay positive and do whatever that keeps you uh, or makes you stay positive. You can keep reading books. You can start. You can also watch a lot of motivation videos. You can call Kumar sir, or you can call me to get a few. Obviously, it's it's always a, it's always good to keep learning from each other. Always like I like Kumar sir said that we came here to give add uh, add values uh, to your topics, but I think we've learned more than what we came to tell you about. And I think that's the beauty of uh, entrepreneurship and the beauty of knowledge. The more you learn, the more you speak, the more you actually nurture yourself and the more you grow. And above all, whatever success you get, whatever heights you achieve, please always be humble, always be grounded. Remember your roots, that's the most important thing. Um, even, I'm, even when I'm in Australia, I always make sure to do things for my country in India. I never do anything for Australia first. Even if I'm writing a research paper, I'll send it to ISRO first before I send it to NASA. Obviously, when ISRO doesn't reply, that's when it goes to NASA. But always remember the roots you've come from and always remember your family. And above all, always believe that God has a plan for everyone. There is a big purpose is why we've all been here. And whenever there's a problem in life, talk to someone you feel is the right person to speak to and Always hope for the best and prepare for the worst. That's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, you know, your suggestions really will make a change in young entrepreneurs as you were very experienced towards this topic. And, you know, getting suggestions from all of you people, it is a great blessing for me as well as the uh, viewers who are watching this. Thank you for being here, sir. And uh, I'm sure you all enjoyed it but uh, I have a surprise element over here. I would request uh, my dad uh, who's here. What kind of role parents must play to develop entrepreneurship? Oh, good evening to all. Rather, I will say thanks to all of you. Uh, spend your time because the one, I mean, like, um, I will take, I mean, one point from both Mr. Kumarvel and uh, Mr. Ladin actually. It is a marathon. If your child is failing, be happy about it, actually. Because like you know, when the child started walking, they will fall down. It is the same thing. If a child has started doing something on entrepreneurship, they will fail, actually. I mean, it is like a salt. Okay, that is the time where the learning happens. Do support your child. I mean, like, you know, you, le you too learn a lot, actually. Okay, so, I mean, probably if the child wanted to do something on an entrepreneurship, you have been blessed. I mean, like, you know, blessed to have those child actually support them. Thank you all. And uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for your support. Helping Hasani, Rajkumar Rajkumar has come now. Uh, yeah, Rajkumar, sir, I would uh, request you uh, to give a few words towards this topic and your opinion, please. Uh, it's too big to tell a few words because uh, I feel uh, a bit... Uh, what do you tell? Because the giants are there, starting from Mr. Kumravel to Lenin and the four big entrepreneurs, today's entrepreneurs. Because we call ourselves that we have achieved like this, we have achieved like this. But they must be just 25% uh, of my age, but today they have achieved a wonderful feat. So I am little small to them. And uh, I can only tell miles to go and uh, the two Jains have already they always say it's a marathon and uh, you need to keep yourself going and in this journey of entrepreneurship 
and uh, you're venturing. I'm sure it will be big stones, but I don't think that stones, you are like a water, you will keep the stone aside and you will all flow with good mentorship of your dad, uh, Mr. Uh, Lakshmanaranan, and uh, the entrepreneurship, uh, we should call him as daddy because that guts uh, Mr. Kumaravel had, uh, Lenin uh, has, and uh, we all look at them uh, for our uh, daily, what we should do in our professions. In that way, I uh, have both of them and uh, the Hindu Tamil Desai partnering with you is definitely going to not only through this YouTube, people are not going to watch, but through the columns of the Hindu Tamil Desai, we will definitely take more and more young entrepreneurs to come and we will feature them. Wishing all the four people, including you, the leader in this, uh, best wishes and uh, take the mentorship, not today, lifelong from Mr. Kumaravel and Lenin. And good luck to the viewers who are watching this. If you have any questions, definitely do not ask Rajkumar. It is only Harshini who will be able to answer at this point in time. Good luck and goodbye. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for your blessing and great to have you here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your support. It really means a lot to me because this is my first live event. And um, I would like to uh, thank, again, Hindu Tamil Desai for supporting me as well as Brain Feed. And um, uh, to mention the schools who are supporting me for this, Maharishi Vidya Mandar uh, Schools, 85 International, Smart Modern School, Kalgi Ranganathan Monfort School, Sai Vidyalaya and Arya Vidyalaya. And also I take this opportunity to thank my mom, my dad, uh, all my friends who supported me a lot. And uh, not to mention my family because they motivate me a lot, they encourage me a lot. And also you, thank you for supporting me, it really means a lot. And I also take time to thank Dot. Uh, Dr. Nirmala Krishnan, uh, former principal of uh, um, Mahindra World School, who has been my mentor and uh, guide because she helped me a lot. Uh, I mean, she gave me a, a platform to start my YouTube and media. And uh, yeah, I love her so much. Thank you for supporting me. And um, I would like to end this live. Please subscribe. It really motivates me a lot. I would like to do more. And uh, thank you, everybody, uh, two legends of being here, Kumravel, sir, and Lenin, sir. It really means a lot. And uh, to all of you who are spending time with me, your valuable time. And uh, thank you. I'll see you another time. Bye. Thank you, Hasani. Keep shining. Thank you for the opportunity thank to you, meet you all. Hasani. See you all soon. Thank you, Hasani. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you, Hasani. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Well done, Hasini. Thank you so much. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Hasini. Oh, uh, thanks, Kaushik. Hasini, you made it fantastic. Congratulations. Thanks, Ramani, sir. Bye. Pleasure meeting you, Mr. Lenin. Thank you, sir. The, the, the honor is likewise. Off live stream.